on today's churchtechhouse.com screencast show. Kinetic typography without a click in ProPresenter 6. Welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week I help you with the software that we use in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. And I'd love for you to join the conversation, so just leave your question or comment below the video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, etc. So, I've been thinking um, about some of the things that I've covered in previous tutorials for ProPresenter 5, and the differences and maybe some changes that we could uh, bring about with ProPresenter 6. So without further ado, let's head over to my computer and we'll take a look. One of the cool things that you can do in church video is motion graphics, of course. Now, motion graphics for lyrics can get a little dicey. Normally you have to create the entire thing, uh, sync it to a click track, and depending on your situation, that might not be the best way to do it. So let me show you a couple of tricks to make this um, an easier process for the music team. may not be easier for you, but you'll see where you have a little bit more control uh, than you normally would. Normally, if you have a click track and the music team gets off, you have a problem because you're just out of luck. Uh, maybe you can try and speed it up, but really, or try and slow it down, but really it's less than ideal. So here is another way to do that if you think that's going to be the problem or the your music team doesn't want to click track in their ears or you don't have the infrastructure to do that. You can create individual videos for each line. So this background is on a separate layer than this foreground video. Now, let me go ahead and play this. It will be staticky because I've got a, just the, um, the computer that's running on this is both recording video and it's playing this back, so it's trying to do way too much, but you'll get an idea of what I'm, I'm doing. I made this in Apple's Motion and I exp it doesn't have a background um, and I exported it as ProRes 4444 which is a video codec that has an alpha channel for transparency. So this is uh, a good way to accomplish that. So that's how I can get all this motion and everything and these are not transitions that are created in ProPresenter. This isn't a, a PowerPoint that I brought in. This is actually video. Now this is beefier video than you'd normally need. Normally what you would use is um, something like uh, you would use a H.264 uh, file. I was blanking there for a second. You'd use an H.264 file uh, because that's what Pro, uh, ProPresenter really likes. So that's what this is. This is an H.264 file, but this is a ProRes 4444. That's four fours. Um, so it has that transparency. You can't use ProRes 422. You can't use ProRes 422LT. Neither of those have the alpha channel with transparency. So keep that in mind. You can make that in motion or After Effects, I believe, will also do it. Uh, I used motion in this case. This is actually one of the stock things. I just changed the words in it, so it's pretty straightforward. So that's how you make that. But to add this in, what you would do is you'd add in a blank slide and then edit the slide. Let's actually do this one, um, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. So we're, I'm going to delete this, and 
So when I come in here, first off I'm going to type in the label here so that it's easy for me to recognize which is which as the operator. Then what I'm going to do is click on this, which is add a video to the slide. I'm adding this video to the exact same layer as the lyrics. So since this has, uh, and you'll notice that I've divided them up, uh, verse 1, line 1, verse 1, line 2, verse 1, line 3, etc., just to make it easy for me as I put these in, I select that and it brings it in. So since this has transparency as the background, whatever the background video is playing or a background still, doesn't matter, that will show up right here. So when I do that, then it will play automatically. Okay, It's very important that you add that on the same layer as you would normally add regular text. This is just regular text right here. Because if you don't, if you use it as a background or a foreground, it will supersede this background. And that's not what we're going for. We're going to put the video on top of this, as you see. Now, I do want to point out that I'm not married to this background. This is another advantage of doing it this way. If the worship pastor says, man, that's great, except um, really the blue just isn't doing it for me, or let's say you're reusing the same song and it's uh, Christmas time and you want something more red, let's go with this, and you'll see how just... I can change this background at any time to anything that I want. I'm doing this on the fly. So it's really very simple to do that and it gives you maximum flexibility in what you're doing. But there's a problem. First off, without a label here, you can't necessarily tell what you're doing. So it's worth putting the label in. You'll notice I made them orange too so that it's clear which one I should click on next. The reason I don't have these um, hidden is because we have a problem with doing this. Since this isn't text, it won't show up on the stage display. No problem though. I've created a special stage display um, format and I've added in the queue so add queue stage display layout. I've created a kinetic typography layout. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here we go into preferences and configure stage display. My normal music stage display has current slide, next slide. That's just the way that we do it at my church. You can do it however you want. So what I did was for the kinetic typography one, instead of current slide, next slide, I did next slide and next slide notes. And in doing that, then I have the worship team trained to look at the this as the next thing they're going to sing, and this is what they're actually singing. So basically what I did in doing that was I put this has next slide notes of A Mighty Fortress Is Our God so that I can start out with this during the introductory part of the song. So right click, edit slide, and here we are on this tab right here. Scroll down, slide display notes. I put it right there so that when I click on this, this shows up in the next slide notes. Then for this, I actually have that on the main slide here, and for the next slide notes, I put in the next slide of Bulwark Never Failing. So I've gotten rid of a couple of problems by doing this. Uh, I've gotten rid of the problem that the worship team couldn't see what was on the stage display. Uh, as you can see, when I go to the stage display, now when they start here, I get the next slide notes 
and um, so and then when I click on this as the main one I get this as the what they're currently singing and the next slide notes are a bulwark never failing then when I click on this one I get a bulwark never failing from here showing up up there the next slide notes are helper he amid the flood tells them to sing that next and so on so that solves all the problems with doing kinetic typography in this way and it's a little more work but chances are your church is going to do one maybe two songs a week like this if they go crazy three but that would be probably unusual for most churches the reason we do this is not to be cool by the way the reason we do this is because we want to draw people's attention to the words that we're singing and in this case the words that we're singing have deep theological meaning and it's very easy to when <clears throat> when your um, lyrics look like this just to sing and uh, not pay attention to anything whatsoever you're just going along and it's pretty easy to skim past this but the movement and the creative way that these are presented draws the eye and gives you a little bit extra to bring to the table well I hope that helped you I hope that now you know just how you can pull this off if the worship band at your church doesn't like having a click track in their ear, how you can make it work without that. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, and there you can pick up a church tech gift of your choice along with a free subscription to my email newsletter. You'd also like my store, so head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store where I have all my books that I've written and various resources that you can pick up for your church, including probably the best deal there, quite frankly, is Church Tech U. Church Tech U, short for Church Tech University, is an online community of church techies where we help each other out with questions and problems that we have. And it's got all of my content on the backside so that you can uh, download that and use it at your leisure for one low monthly or yearly price. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store and click on the Church Tech U logo and uh, get your subscription today. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.